I think that people had a cynical, jaded sense that uh, the ultra-wealthy get away with it. But no one had ever seen the numbers. Tax information is among the most closely guarded secrets in America. But in 2021, the news site ProPublica revealed that it had 15 years of tax records for the wealthiest individuals in the country. I don't think anyone really understood that people like Jeff Bezos, who's the richest human being in the world, or Elon Musk, who runs Tesla and has been the second richest person in the world, could pay zero in taxes, in federal income taxes, in recent years. Elon Musk paid zero in 2018. Jeff Bezos paid zero federal income taxes in two recent years, 2007 and 2011. Michael Bloomberg paid zero in taxes in recent years. George Soros did it. And so that was pretty shocking in and of itself, that they could literally get their bill down to zero. Perhaps the most surprising thing is that for the most wealthy people in America, the top 0.1%, the tax rates don't seem to apply. And while Washington debates raising the tax rate on the wealthy, the super wealthy may as well be living in outer space. We're essentially having a debate that's an entirely a non sequitur. We are fixated on rates. Rates dominate our conversation, uh, but we're really not talking about the essential things that matter. The wealth defense industry is the army of tax attorneys, wealth managers, accountants, people who work with the world's wealthiest families. They're paid millions to hide trillions. They are the financial butlers to the super rich. I grew up in the wealthiest 1%. My great grandfather ran a successful meatpacking business. Four generations later, here I am. Now I made a decision in my early 20s that I didn't really want to benefit from a system of dynastic and inherited wealth. What that did is it gave me an insight into this whole system, and particularly how the wealth defense industry, which are often what families consider the trusted advisors to the family, are part of the enablers. They're the fixers. They're the ones that wealthy families hire to move their money to the shadows. So one way to look at it is the wealthy would rather spend money on their lawyers than pay higher taxes. If they can game the system, if they can pay for lobbyists, they're willing to pay a lot. So it's not like the rich don't want to pay, they just don't want to pay the federal government. I guess they think the rest of us should be paying taxes so they don't have to. Facing elite armies of tax attorneys and accountants, the IRS realizes in the early 2000s that they need to come up with a way to fight back. We could think of as a SEAL Team 6, an elite unit of auditors to go after the super wealthy. But the wealthy move quickly to disarm this new IRS unit tasked with getting their money. They get their friends in government to go after the IRS instead. One of the things that's happened over the last 10 years is that the capacity of the Internal Revenue Service to do oversight of the super rich has been decimated. You're four times more likely to be audited if you use their earned income credit, which is a tax provision for low and middle income households, than if you're a super rich person. When you look at who's audited, the IRS is auditing EITC claimants in the South. More than 50% of black Americans live in the South. So why is it that we see the earned income tax credit getting so much scrutiny from the IRS, but not high income, high wealth individuals? Why? Because it's easier. The typical earned income tax claimant doesn't have a plethora of lawyers on retainer. They're an easy mark. But the truth about how much taxes the wealthy avoid paying is even more astounding than most people realize. Earthlings say the only two constants in life are death and taxes. But for billionaires, there's only death. Here's how that works. If you're super wealthy, you get to decide what your income really is. You simply choose not to pay yourself, leave your wealth alone in your company or your investments. They sit on this mountain of wealth. It appreciates in value, and they don't sell, and they don't spend down their fortunes. Instead, they borrow against their fortunes to fund their lifestyle or help their business. While for the rest of us, borrowing means going into debt, 
For the uber-rich, it's a way to sequester their wealth from the IRS. And then they can, at the very end, when they die, they can avoid the taxes at the end of life, the estate tax. And so they are really outside of the tax system. Of course, wealthy individuals aren't alone in avoiding paying taxes. In 2020, 55 of the richest corporations in America also got away with paying zero taxes. Well, we end up living in a society where we, the people, pay for all of the external costs of the corporation. So McDonald's can give us cheaper hamburgers because we're paying for the roads that its big trucks are going back and forth on to create a fast food empire. And that's the way every corporation tends to work. They, they look at whatever's gonna cost them money and they figure out how to externalize that to the public sector. Where we end up in is a world with a crumbling infrastructure, with no social services unable to pay for basic medical care for people. 